Hey travelers, welcome back to another video. Today, Dearest and I are at Niagara Cave. Um, we'll be exploring another cave on our anniversary trip. And the spe something special about this cave is that there's an underground waterfall. So, hope you guys are looking forward to this video and enjoy it. The cave was discovered in 1924 when a farmer noticed his pigs went missing. He went to find his pigs and found them at the bottom of a 75 feet sinkhole, unharmed and healthy. When he went to receive his pigs, he found more than just his livestock. He shared his story with others and it reached cave explorers who wanted to explore the cave. Al Kramer, Leo Tekep, and Joe Flynn explored the cave in 1932. They spent two hours exploring the layout of the cave and were amazed at what they found. They found a 62-foot waterfall, ceilings that reached 100 feet high, fossils, stone formations, and amazing walkways. Al, Leo, and Joe were inspired by the Niagara Waterfall, so they named the cave after the waterfall. During the first season the cave was opened, it was the most advertised tourism attraction in the country. After 47 years of owning the cave, in 1981, Al Kramer sold the cave to Ron and Nancy Vigray. And then right here in the floor, we have, we like to call it alligator's back. You can probably tell it's the same. <laughs> but this alligator's back is actually the natural, the natural form of the cave before they flatten it all out to make it more accessible to us. So you can only imagine being one of those first cakes where they're going to walk through flooring like that for a mile. <laughs> and then right up here, what just looks like a bunch of muddy rocks, is actually a formation called Floso. Floso is going to be made when the water goes into the soil, meeting up with carbon dioxide, making carbonic acid. That carbonic acid then goes into the limestone, so making it calcite. And when that calcite gets stripped off into ceilings, it builds up on the ground and creates this flowstone formation. This flowstone is active and growing, which makes it very fragile. It's very important to do not touch any of the flowstone in the cave. And flowstone will actually grow about half an inch every one three years. The cave celebrated its 90th birthday since being found in 2014. We may see a few more gas pods on the tour, but I might not put it out to you guys. Who knows it goes. And then along this room, you can also see on the walls and ceiling those little holder pod parts that really define the circle formation of limestone. Those are actually going to be made from trace fossils, which in this case basically means that this limestone used to all be more of like a mud before it solidified, and worms would live inside of it. And wherever those worms would move around, they'd leave those holes that would solidify there. So basically, every hole that we see in the rock is just a worm in the ground. But thankfully for us, all those worms are dead by. The first wedding that took place at the cave was in 1935, one year after it opened. You think you've done a lot more than the last cave. Yeah. So this right here is not your cave's very own wedding chapel, because what good cave doesn't have its own wedding chapel? <laughs> But there's actually been about 400 weddings taking place right in this room since we opened up. So these right here are going to be called uh, Ruben stalactites. Ruben stalactites are going to grow off the wall. And then right above it, we have some drapery stalactites. Drapery stalactites are about the same thing, but they're going to hang on, hang on the ledge, which gives it a different shape. CNN, Travel Channel, and several other media outlets ranked Niagara Cave as a top destination in America. And then this room right here is what we like to call the echo chamber. 
Although it's not as much of like a regular echo where it's gonna bounce your voice back at you, this echo chamber's walls are gonna make it more like vibrate to low noises. Besides exploring the cave, you can also shop at the gift shop, play 19 hole community golf, pan for dips and fossils, and there's also an outdoor picnic area. <laughs> In a lot of these heavy metal hallways, you guys can really see how the walls are kind of like a curved shape or almost look like C's. That's because when that water is flowing down these hallways and you're roading away the limestone, the water pressure is so strong in some areas we're reluctant to indent on the walls. And then right here, at first glance, these right here may just look like normal ribbon stalactites. But if I put away my regular flashlight as well as my UV black light, we can see that these stalactites are also the calcite and the stalactites will make it glow, and then the calcite carbonate and the limestone will make it kind of look sparkly. But not only will it shine like that gas, but if I hold my black light close, you can see it also holds the light for a few seconds. <laughs> it's about the most complex thing I've ever done. USA Today ranked the cave as the second best cave in the country in 2016. And then right up above us here, we see what we like to call the wedding veil. The wedding veil consists of some of our oldest and largest lactides throughout the whole entire cave. And obviously, because we have our oldest and largest stalactites up top, we get to have some of our youngest and smallest stalagmites right here below it. Each year, the cave sees between 25,000 and 30,000 visitors. And then right after, we'll see one of the scarier formations of the cave. This one takes a little bit, bit of imagination. But we'll walk over see a skeleton man and a skeleton arm hanging out the wall right there. You can see that. You can even see some white fingernails on the edge of the skeleton here. But I like to say that this will happen to the last kid who touch the cave walls. <laughs> the cave does always get its revenge. But then, a little heads up, from this point on, the cave walls do get a lot more narrow. The cave is open from May 1st to October 30th, and tours are from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. And then to our left up here, there's an active piece of flowstone sticking out of the wall. Usually right about here will be the uh, claustrophobic people start freaking out. <laughs> the cave only offers one type of tour and it's $20 for a general admission. Kids 3 to 12 are $12, and kids under 2 are free. Yeah, right here is going to be the first fish right fossil. You can see it almost looks like a worm, but if you can just picture that being a side view of like a lily pad type thing. And if you guys would like to point that out to the person behind you so everyone can get a good look at it. And then right up here is going to be a top view of that fisher rate fossil. This will give us a little bit better of a picture of uh, how it would look like a lily pad type thing. During the tour, you'll descend 275 stairs and ascend 275 stairs, equaling to 550 stairs. But now we're going to get into a new section of the cave. This section is going to be called the Grand Canyon section. If you can look up where we have been walking, the ceilings are going to be about 50, 60 feet high. But once we walk down this staircase, around the corner and go a few more steps, the ceilings will be about 100 feet high. And 
And then right up here, you'll see another one of those whirlpool formations. This one we like to call the Liberty Bell because you can see that crack going right through the middle of it there. And then again to our left up here, there's another whirlpool formation. Niagara Cave is 27 minutes, 20 miles from Mystery Cave. I made a video on Mystery Cave, if you'd like to see that, the link will be in the description. Niagara Cave is the largest limestone cave in the Midwest at 200 feet deep. If you would like to see a better shot of these hallways, then stay tuned for the end of the video where you'll be able to see the hallways clearly. We like to call this room the Cathedral Dome. No one's quite sure how this dome like ceiling was made. But a lot of people think it was a whirlpool formation and since there's water coming down this hallway. And there may have also been a waterfall right up along there. That those two streams of water may have met up, made a whirlpool around the ceiling and that made that dome like shape. And people do that, so I have to find all the ceilings. If I try to find all the ceilings, do that. Oh, wow. You can do that for all of them. There it is. That's pretty cool. In the comments, let me know if you would explore this cave or not. Or if you have explored any other caves, let me know. I would love to hear about them. In the description, you'll be able to find more information of the cave, plus the drive time from the Twin Cities, and the links for where I got all of my information. 
so this is the end of today's video. My stabilizer died at the waterfall. So that's so why- she's been holding it like this the yeah. entire time. So that's why my foot is shaky and uneven and stuff, which I'm very annoyed about, but it happens. But it gives it a, a sense of realism, I you guess, know, yeah, walking true. through a cave. But it was a really cool experience. I highly, highly recommend Niagara Cave and Mystery Cave. Probably on the same day like we did. Yeah, break it up, break it up. Yeah, it. but it was still a fun experience. So if you guys enjoyed this video, check, come back next Wednesday at 5 p.m. Time to time for another fun-filled adventure. And if you'd like to see more trips like this before they come on videos, then check out my Instagram. That will be in the description. Also, whoops. I did record a two-part vlog for my and Darcy's trip. This is our anniversary trip. So if you'd like to see what we did when we're not exploring parks, then check out the link for that in the description. And with that, we will see you guys in the next one.